Josh Neighbors, Big 12 Watch, are uh, on our other uh, YouTube property, Crystal Ball College Football. Uh, was he wearing a Texas Tech shirt? Yeah, I'm trying to make amends with all the fan bases that have set this offseason. So uh, <laughs> wearing their merchandise is one way to do that, I think, right? Okay. And he's also, you know, for the ladies or the fellas, if they're into it, uh, flaunting the guns today. So there we go. Let's go. Let's yeah. Go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> work, in, work in progress. Josh, um, you know, we were just going to talk about that it's week zero and then it's week one next week and all that um, in this week's segment. But. Um, some interesting news has popped up about UConn perhaps being um, uh, back in the water for Brett Yormark, and it's been kind of his pet project. Your thoughts on the additive value of UConn to the league, um, particularly when it comes to football, which would, would not be much for basketball. It'd be great, but for football, it's not going to get anybody excited. Boy, that Brett Yormark is a real hoop head, isn't he? I mean, he loves, he loves his basketball. Um, yeah, so like that's that's the big part of this. Also, I mean, it's also it's an excuse to do stuff in New York City like the same way. It so Pac is, Mo man. I'm yeah. glad you said this. Like he is absolutely. Hey, Craig, where was New York. where was Big Twelve Media Days for football this year? Yeah, yeah. No, I, no, I think I think you're absolutely right though, and I don't think it gets mentioned. But yeah, this is absolutely like I want to be closer to New York City. Uh, yeah. in, in some ways for him. Yeah, absolutely. Now there's look, I love the Big Twelve tournament in KC, but like. There is a part of me that would love to see the Big 12 tournament at Madison Square Garden. Oh, sure. I, I mean, it is the best basketball conference in my opinion. Like, I, I worked on all these shows at XM, and, you know, they, they, every single little conference channel is just, well, SEC is the best conference, you know, all, all this kind of stuff. Like, I love, the, I love the Big East. UConn is the reason why that conference is so good. They've got, I mean, Creighton's been really, really good, Marquette. But, like, those schools have not really gotten over any significant hump. I mean, you've got multiple national championships caliber programs in the big 12 right baylor's got one kansas got one obviously we just saw texas tech you know the red raiders come within a shot against uva of getting their own national championship they're adding arizona who has been perennially up top you know uh, especially a lot recently so i mean and go on go on and you know so on and so forth down the list of all these great programs they've got um it basketball is where it makes sense right football i mean it's one extra window you could have one extra thing you could put on espn plus one more fs1 situation and it's probably pretty good for UConn because they I know independence probably good for their national recruiting but like this gives them a bit more of a home Texas Florida you know, those guaranteed trips also we can bring back the civil conflict the greatest <laughs> trophy in all of sport where I think the legacy of that rivalry between UCF and UConn is the fact that, that trophy gets left wherever it gets won mm -hmm. uh so we can bring back that trophy that will definitely not be a protected rivalry but like you know they, they can bring it back yeah, I haven't gone to see the uh, reaction of any UCF fans, or I haven't seen those come across my timeline. But yeah, I forgot about the civil conflict, civil conflict. Uh, that would that would be reignited potentially by this. So, I mean, is this just? I, I, I'm totally with you, man, on the New York City thing and just the the personal desire of Brett Yormark there. But um, is this also just signaling like? We're, we're a basketball conference, buddy. Like, we're going to yeah. try to be good in football, but we realize, like, that's just not going to be possible. We're going to be a, the basketball conference. I mean, if they're going to make the NCAA tournament bigger, you know, and they're going to keep paying you more units per game, uh, getting teams like UConn that play in quite a few games and win quite a few games mm -hmm. uh, in recent memory, I mean, it's going to be helpful. And uh, that's where, you know, like, football is the big one, right? But the NCAA basketball tournament, I think it's, at least to me, like, you know, number one with a bullet in terms of any postseason. I love the World Cup. Uh, I love. I think Champions League is awesome. I think soccer's got some really, really good formats for their tournaments. Um, in terms of like how a how a tournament or postseason plays out, is it the right way to always decide a winner? No, but is it the one that everybody loves the most? Yes. I mean, so much so that people do brackets of action movie stars and you know of condiments and you know wh whatever else. Like whenever the NCAA tournament comes around, because brackets are just the best and the NCAA tournament remains a multi-billion dollar industry. So why would you not still be a part of that? And look like football, you know, I have to go read the details from Ross Dellinger. I think it'd be a bit more of a runway and we'll see financially. Well, how that, that is, goes. that is one thing I'll mention here because I was going to wrap around back, but apparently according to the, the couple of reports out there, UConn football would not join until the next TV contract. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'm like, <laughs> you're gonna lose any sleep over it? Is no, anybody gonna lose any sleep over it? I was just mentioning that detail because no, 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 yeah, everybody's yeah, yeah. hung up on the football yeah. side of this, right? Yeah. And and I mean, like, 
eventually they join. And at that point in time, you're just hoping that they've got a few more national championships in, in basketball. Mm. And, you know, they step some stuff up uh, football wise in terms of their facilities. Cause I mean, you, you don't want schools getting embarrassed, like flat out from the, from the word go. Um, but like, I mean, that's, that's UConn's not in a great spot, you know, Look, they really improved, but not in a great spot football wise. Like this is about basketball, and this is about adding as many just pure valuable brands to why the UConn thing got or the excuse me the Gonzaga thing's been explored. Uh, but I yeah the fo- the football runway part of it's good keeps the Big Twelve in the news that way. And also, I mean, it, any argument about is the Big Twelve still the best basketball conference starts and ends with UConn. So if you want to end that argument, you could just add UConn, right? And that kind of just ends the argument right there. So yeah, um, good call. If you want to become the best basketball or make sure you maintain your reputation as the best basketball conference. I, I think it would, uh, it would get uh, Dan Hurley to the NBA a lot faster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd be curious how he, uh, no, Gino doesn't strike me as a guy that wants to travel all over the country yeah. to play as well. That's what's interesting about this is like, maybe the money's too much to pass up or the exposure or whatever, even though I feel like they get plenty of basketball exposure, but I can't imagine that those two would be, in favor of this, unless I'm just, you know, totally missing something I, here. I think Dan wants that three-peat, right? Like, there is something about that three-peat that would put him... Because here's the thing. There's no doubt. He is the best basketball coach in college basketball. Like, full stop. Um, But there's also an argument, too. Like, he's got UConn in the spot where, you know, I, I think much like what we're seeing with Mark Pope at, at Kentucky. Like, I think Kentucky, if Mark Pope's a pretty normal, average to good coach, Kentucky's still going to be really good. And I think U- UConn's approaching that area. And think about this too, guys. You know, I- I've always used the Baylor example. Hey, three separate coaches have won 10 plus games at Baylor in the last 15 years. That shows you you've got something going on there that, you know, is you can reach certain heights. UConn's got three national championship winning coaches since what, 2009, right? They've got, obviously, they've got um, uh, Jim Calhoun. They have got uh, Kevin Ollie. And they've also had now uh, Dan Hurley win too. So, you know, that thing is a, is a machine at this point and all of college basketball, maybe women's starting to be a bit more towards South Carolina, but like, it still feels like college basketball runs through stores, Connecticut. And so I, I think it'd be a good asset from, from that standpoint. And I, I would love to see Dan Hurley go for a three Pete in the big 12. Like that would be just theater. I mean, trying to, you know, go through that schedule and make it through still peak at the right time. That'd be great theater. But yeah, I'm actually wondering if we even get a Dan Hurley in the big 12, some NBA team needs to not disrespect him like the Lakers did and give him an actual worthwhile contract because he right now, at least to me is probably the best basketball coach on the planet. I, I think that um, if Greg Popovich retires here in the next couple of years, that that's where he's going to want to go because young, he can build it and it's not with, with Wemby. Goes, good Lord. Oh yeah. my God. Could you imagine? Yeah. That's what, look, if I'm a coach like Dan Hurley and I'm thinking about going to the NBA, that's maybe one of the jobs I would go. Yeah. Right yeah. there. You know, I, I want to be a part of this next wave uh, of it. All right. Let's uh, let's talk about uh, next week, Josh. Um, you know, we've got West Virginia, Penn State, which is a huge one. Um, uh, uh, Pat McAfee's going to be drunk there because uh, he's drunk in Ireland right now doing the show. Uh, there's going to be a lot of hype around that one. Uh, I, I, it's not a make or break game for either squad, but it is certainly a, a, a huge tone setter when it comes to what their season is going to be like. Um, I, I don't have really any problem saying it's the biggest game for, for maybe a Big 12 team this year is West Virginia versus Penn State. Yeah, so I talked about this last week with the lack of big non-conference games. Like, it's going to be hard for the Big 12 to make big, bold statements this year because their best opportunities at other teams are like Houston plays Oklahoma, and Houston obviously is going through a rebuild right now. Uh, West Virginia gets their shot here at a Penn State. You know, the biggest non-conference games for Arizona is Kansas State. The biggest one for Kansas State is the other way around. Baylor's playing Utah. Utah's playing Baylor. You kind of see where I'm going with all of these. Yeah. So your best opportunity is, and also I think UCF's got Florida, but it's like buried in the middle of the season, right? And yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And that, that's probably the other important one too. Like but also like poor one, yeah. Florida is going to be playing the, you know, like the murders row Yankees of schedules this year. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of going to be tough to assess them pretty fairly. Um, this one's huge because West Virginia was not uncompetitive last year in this game. Um, they had nothing really worked out about what they wanted to do and look like they've now gotten identity, but like, can their offensive line stand up to Penn state's defensive line? Because this West Virginia offensive line has been really, really good. 
And this is a great test against this Penn State defense. Um, also, think an advantage for West Virginia is they've seen Andy Kotelnicki's offense. So they're going to have an idea of what is going to be coming their way from Penn State. But can you make Drew Hour beat you? And can Drew Hour beat you is, is a great question. This, this game to me is, I mean, if West Virginia can find a way to pull this thing off, it would be fantastic. But I just, I don't love the matchup for them. You think about a game where, you know, uh, you, West Virginia's ability to like limit possessions in a game is going to be a big key for them. And so being able to run the ball, hold on to the football, convert on third down, like that's kind of all stuff I feel like Penn State's kind of tailor made to stop them from doing. And so that's why I'm a bit concerned about the matchup. But I also hate the fact the game's at 11 o'clock. But still, um, massive opportunity. And to be honest, guys, Neil Brown's been pretty darn good in rivalry games. He beat Virginia Tech twice. Uh, he beat, you know, obviously Pitt last year, even with the injury. And I know Pitt wasn't that good, but still they beat Pitt last year with the injury happening uh, to Garrett Green. So, you know, he's been, he's had a decent record in some of these uh, East Coast adjacent Midwest, you know, Black Diamond, you know, uh, swing state rivalry games, if you will. Uh, so, I mean, I'm fired up for that. I'm, I cannot wait for that one. I don't know if you saw this. Um, it was uh, something we didn't have time to get to, and I'm just kind of curious your thoughts on it because it's it's a bit of a unique, and maybe it's getting too outside the box, but CU Athletics Colorado has informed the Denver Post that Deion Sanders and anybody else associated with Colorado football will no longer take questions from columnist Sean Keeler due to what Colorado perceives as a series of sustained personal attacks. I don't know how long you've been following along with Deion's press conferences, but he's yeah. kind of had a back and forth with Sean Keeler. I mean, dude, I, I get having issues with reporters, but man, this is like this is like a a regime, you know, ordering like we're not going to have outside state media asking us questions that just i don't know man this seems like it's a it's a little wonky for colorado and not very good perception wise although i know they're they're fans and that the Dion sick of fans will disagree i will say like this goes across racial player backgrounds whatever there is no softer group of americans than college football coaches like they are the <laughs> softest group of pansies ever you all remember lincoln riley calling up about the kids on top of the roof yeah you know? like you know just trying to ban student media and like go credit to those kids for going to get the scoop that, that was awesome in my opinion mm -hmm. you know um oh Davo sweeney threatens to quit if kids get paid like cry me a river all the way to the bank with the 11 million dollar check you know like that that stuff it just and, and then Deion sanders is a good example of this you know, when he said, uh, you wouldn't call Nick Saban, Nick. No, that's what they did. They actually called him Nick. A bunch of people did. They don't have to call you coach prime. Like nobody has to do that to you. They can still be respectful and do their jobs. And I'm not sure the nature of this specific rivalry, uh, or in the rivalry, this specific confrontation. But what I do know is last week, Deion Sanders just randomly accused a guy from the Denver post. Was this Denver post guy or is this yeah. a guy from where else? Yeah. 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 Sean so Keeler, is this yeah. the guy where he's like, you work for CBS and he, he was wrong. Is no, that's different. That's different. That's different. That's his other beef. That's his <laughs> other so case. he's got, yeah. So he's got his line and he's like, I forgot what he said last week. Something like, I forgot what the line was, but he's just like talking out of his, you know, both sides of his mouth, out of his, out of his, you know what? So like, I, I get it, but he needs to worry about his team on the field. And I know like a, lot, a whole lot of his, his stock is, is in perception and whatnot, but man, it is not a good vibe coming out of Colorado right now. They and better not go turn around and lose to North Dakota state next week. I know that much. There's a chance. There's a chance they might. There's a chance. I, I think, I think they're going to be fine because the teams like Colorado are built to peak early mm -hmm. just because they're not very well built on depth. Uh, but yeah, man, like it is, the vibe is not great, but I mean, the good news is for them is they've got probably the best player in college football on their team. Uh, and they've got one of the best quarterbacks in college football on their team. So that's kind of a nice thing to have. Well, Josh, so here is um, from the, the sports information department, uh, uh, perceived as a series of sustained personal attacks. Uh, when asked for those specific examples by the Denver Post, uh, they cited his use of such phrases as false prophet, deposition Dion, planet prime, Bruce Lee of BS, the Dion Kool-Aid, and circus. I wish I was responsible for some of those. I wish I had the, yeah, I had the yeah, capacity. Great. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, look, I can see how you could take that in a certain way, but like, is his whole thing not like I'm a prophet? Like, do you, do you believe? I believe was his line last year, right? Yeah. Like that's kind of, that's kind of his vibe. That is, that is what he is. He is, he is, you know, if you're going to talk your way into being a winner and they didn't talk their way into much winning, they did some winning last year, but it wasn't like a significant amount. 
like you have to kind of be able to, to balance both sides. It's not going to be all positive all the time. Um, and this is why a lot of coaches would rather have a closed shop than they would have things open up, right? It's just easier to have things closed. But like, if you invite people in, you know, don't be surprised. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, the, the star gets shocked and they had this person, you know, profile them forever. And it was like, oh, it's a terrible profile. It's like, well, you let them in and they saw all your dirty laundry and they saw everything. So, you know, it's, it's not always going to be puff pieces and whatnot. And Dion got a lot of positive press last year. But then, honestly, I don't think you got a lot of negative press. I just think people just kind of forgot because it wasn't a huge story anymore and they couldn't play defense. So yeah. this this feels like more of a Dion issue now that he's going to have to fight. And I don't feel like national media care. I mean, do you all feel differently? I don't feel like national media care that much about this. I mean, no. I mean, like, I think it's ridiculous that you would – uh, I, I think it's silly that people get cagey because look, you're Dion and he's not like he can write what he wants. Like you've got to rise above it. Like that's, yes. that's where you win. This is, this is not winning. Like this is really giving Sean Keeler even more. Right. I know what they think. They think they're teaching him a lesson, but now they've made it worse. So yes, Ch Sean Keeler and the Denver post can really dig in and he's made an enemy, um, where clearly he couldn't bridge a gap. And I don't know if, um, cause Sean Keeler last week in that said, would, could we meet and you want to meet and talk about it? That's and what I thought. Like, yeah. You could, you could, yeah. Dion should have reached out and, and asked for that meeting. Said, like, like, yeah, I, and I don't know if they've had it or not. I'm, I'm, I'm betting that they didn't, uh, I'm going to go with no. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm going to go with no Dion also, um, uh, has a, a clause in his contract uh, that nobody else has that um, requires him only to speak with mutually agreed upon media. So he can make these calls. Mutually agreed upon media. That's like, that's like one party consent, basically. Like mm -hmm. if mutual, mutually agreed upon means that he has to approve. Mm -hmm. So if he's not approving, then like, you know, it doesn't really matter. Right. I mean, that's. Yeah. Yeah. So look, man, like I think coach, like you make a lot of money from the state you should stand up there and have to take questions and you don't have to like all the questions. That's why we, that's why, you know, we love God, love Mike Gundy because he'll justify that drunk driving. Uh, yeah. but like, you know, at least he's, he's standing up there and taking the punches. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else for Josh, Craig? Uh, no, I, I was trying to think if there's been any, I mean, Daquan Finn named the starter at Baylor, Brendan Soresby at Cincinnati. Um, yeah, I don't know anything, anything stand out to you news wise, as far as just important decisions as we get uh, closer to the season here. Well, all the old heads got to enjoy it. Speaking of Mike Gundy, got to enjoy Mike Gundy being like, stop calling me asking for more money. Time and to then, play ball. And everybody's like, that's that's what we like to hear. And I, I mean, I did enjoy it, to, to, to be totally honest. Like, I, then, I did enjoy hearing that. 24 hours later, had QR codes on their helmets. That was yeah, he's like, but, but, <laughs> but also, <laughs> but, if uh, you would like to donate, you can right. do so. Uh, Daquan Finn, I'm super pumped about. Um, I think a player like that can do a whole lot for, especially in this kind of conference, like, I'll give you all the local example for us. I'm super excited to see Taylor and green at Arkansas, oh, yeah. but if you can't block anybody, the sec is not really going to be that forgiving. So like, it doesn't really matter how good or fun or special he can be. Uh, Daquan Finn is old and he has been around for a while and the pass rushes in this conference are not necessarily elite. So if Baylor can get some pretty decent offensive line play and they can get some guys to get, you know, receivers and get open and whatnot. And Jake Spavital can bring a little bit of, you know, what we've seen before, I mean, to, to what Daquan Finn's got going on, if they can make that marriage work, which I, I think they can, this, this should work. And, um, I mean, they brought a guy like that in to start. There was, you know, I don't think anybody had any doubts about whether this was going to be the situation we had, but I am most excited about that. Uh, and Soresby, we knew it'd be the guy at Cincinnati, but I am very, very, very excited to see what, uh, Daquan Finn can cook up at Baylor. Josh neighbors, big 12 watch, check him out on crystal ball college football. Uh, Josh, good luck tomorrow, Paul. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I will talk to you next week because yes, uh, it is time for us to get our weekly segment, uh, back going again. Uh, Josh neighbors, uh, will start joining us on Fridays here, uh, on 365 sports, uh, because Craig and Smokey leave me alone here in the studio and Garrett hits me.